So innovation factory is here with Plan Grid founder Ralph Goody. Um, he came to speak and participate in the Lexus Ohanian event. Thanks, Ralph. Uh, we just want to ask a couple questions. So your company, Plan Grid, raised 1.1 million in seed funding last year. Mm -hmm. What was your biggest takeaway from this process? Um, raising venture capital is a, is a commitment. We were lucky enough to have a complete co-founder committed to it. So we had um, one, one guy, Ryan, who would go out and literally pitch Plan Grid 24-7 for about a month and a half. The other important thing to note with this is that you shouldn't start raising money until you actually have a product. So make sure you figure out exactly what you're going to do and then start, start looking for investment then. When you're looking for investment, it really helps to have a prototype, to have an idea of what you're trying to build. It's pretty obvious. But just know that venture capitalists, well, they come in all different sorts of flavors. But a lot of them, the ones that you'd probably be interested in, in talking to, are pretty quick and pretty, pretty uh, how do you say, the, <laughs> they're direct. So they're going to understand probably not much about your business, but they will understand a few key things that they think will make it so you're not investable. So there's a few buzzwords that you can trip yourself up on really easily. Which that's actually quite unexpected. For instance, if you were to go to a venture capitalist office and you were going to say, we have no competitors. That sounds like a pretty bold statement, right? Hey, this guy has no competitors. That sounds like good product right there. Actually, they'll probably kick you out when you say that, because if you have no competitors, that probably means there's no market validation there. So there's weird things like that, where even though there's a 1% chance that you can have no competitors because you're doing something completely new, when you say that word to them, it kind of like, it's like a kind of a shy away word. You should also treat venture capitalists like, like kind of like dating. You talk to them, when they tell you no, just move on, right? Like when it's over, you just need to like cut, cut the ties and just move on. They're going to try to introduce you to their friends. That also happens from time to time. You talk to a VC person, like, hey, you know, I don't really have my money to put into this, but I've got my friend over here. Like, don't, <laughs> don't fall under that. They're, if they didn't waste their time, if they, if they didn't put money into you themselves, their friends are probably just going to be a waste of time for you as well. Um, those are, I think, a few of the practical things to come away with. We were able to raise a lot of our round through kind of angel investors, which are super, super important because angel investors are able to help you a lot more than VCs, especially in the very beginning when you're doing seed rounds. Angel investors often have a better understanding of your product and are more sensitive and listen a little bit more to. Finding angel investors is a little tricky. Um, when you're raising money, there's actually some SEC regulations into who can invest in a company. So actually investment's a pretty expensive thing. It's, I don't exactly know the quote, but it's somewhere around a million in a bank and over 200,000 a year or something like that. The number, I don't quite remember, but you pretty much have to be uh, moderately wealthy to even be able to be an investor. But in the Bay Area, there's a lot of people that have done startups. They've sold to Google, Facebook, other areas. They have a good pot of money and they're happy working where they are and they're interested in investing in you. So we found a lot of our best investors to be the angel, like, like Alexis as well. Um, I think those are probably the best tips I can give you for that. Um. So you've had a fairly unique career path. What were your, what were the main decisions that led to your becoming an entrepreneur? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, the main decision. So everything kind of happened serendipitously. It wasn't like one day I woke up and I said, I'm going to be an entrepreneur instead. But that being said, I've always, I freelanced for doing this company, so I, I maintained my books, I wrote software for companies, you know, for Sony for instance, I freelanced for them after I worked for them, traveled through Europe uh, while freelancing for them. So I had a kind of an idea of how to work at my own pace, how to work on my own products, how to, you know, kind of build things on my own, and that helped a little bit with the decision of becoming kind of a move into the entrepreneurial space, but really it was just the idea that was there. It wasn't so much a decision that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, it was more like a decision that I wanted to build Plan Grid, which I assume is probably a pretty powerful thing. You've got to have a real passion to like build whatever it is you want to build. So often I feel with entrepreneurship, it's very important to care about the product you want to go with. I'm sure the people that make the best restaurants often love the food. I mean, Chipotle's for instance. That gentleman that started that came to San Francisco, ate at my favorite burrito place, uh, El Ferralito, and said, wow, that burrito was amazing. Like, I bet we could do that. People would like it all over the place, but they just wanted to do it a little bit cheaper. Unfortunately, Chipotle's isn't anywhere close to El Ferralito, but still, not bad. So that's, I think that's kind of where I was, I think that's probably, the biggest thing for me was mostly finding a product that I wanted to build. I really enjoyed working on two-dimensional data. I really enjoyed working with complicated user interfaces. 
These are interfaces that are powerful, but making them clean and easily usable. Our software is used by, you know, foremen, superintendents, people with no no computer experience. So creating like a very beautiful interface for them, or at least a usable interface for them, has always been a big interest of mine. It was really fun for me when I started. So it was more about the product. Of my interest was more in the product than entrepreneurship. Now that I've done it, like this is very, very fun. A lot of it, very, very enjoyable. I, you know, Plain Grid will continue to thrive, and I'm sure, you know, if I decided to, to move anywhere else in life, it would also be into an entrepreneurial pursuit. It's just a, it's a very enjoyable lifestyle. Uh, what qualities do you look for in a co-founder? Uh, so, I mean, the, the qualities that you normally look for I tend to be repeated a lot through the literature, which is uh, tenacity and hustle. And it's very, it's very particular about these two things because they tend to just kind of become kind of noise unless you really go into them. So by tenacity, you have to find people that just really don't give up on things. Um, and that's just not, I don't mean it in like a, more of a, like a, this person's like, oh, they're not going to give up. I mean, much more practically, because a lot of being a co-founder is doing really shitty work. Like, it's not fun. Most of the work you do kind of sucks, to be honest. And you have to find people that are tenacious because they, you have to find people that will carry it through. I mean, even though something kind of sucks, you don't really want to do it. You have to move forward and do it. Someone's got to be responsible for it. So I think one of the number one qualities is you have to have dependability and the ability to actually, like, commit to what you say you're going to do and to move forward with it on your own experience and excitement. You know, you have to be able to drive yourself. Hustle, hustle is a little more fun. I think, like, you know, Alexis has quite a bit of hustle. So hustle is kind of like your ability to convince other people that you, what you're doing is the best thing to do. And that's very important for more reasons than VC. Um, VC funding was just a, a little bit, uh, it, was, it was the first thing we did. Honestly, we raised a round and we just never looked at it again. Uh, Google is one of our investors. They help us out from time to time. They, and we have other investors as well, some construction investors that help us out from time to time. But in the end, the hustle ended up working out a lot better for hiring. Um, hiring engineers is actually pretty tricky. If you want to hire top engineers, it's, again, I'm just going to keep using dating as an analogy, but it's, it's again, like dating, you really need to court them. You need to show them your office, you need to make the office beautiful, you need to take them out to lunch, you need to show them why they want to come work for you, right? And that, that also takes a lot of, a bit of swagger and a bit of convincing. So if you don't have that type of ability to convince people, but these are two, these are two traits in a co-founder that generic traits. Now, when it comes into like being a co-founder that's more technical, you know, on the technical side of co-foundering, you know, you want someone that has built a product from the ground up by themselves. Also, something that I've learned recently is you want people that have experience with management in general. Um, even if their management was just at Old Navy or, you know, Arby's, you know, when they were in high school, being able to really, like, once you make it past your initial product, you immediately have employees if you've been successful. And having employees presents difficulties that are beyond you know, unexpected difficulties to be able to really make sure that people are happy, to make sure that people um, aren't wasting their time, to make sure that you aren't blocking them as well. A lot of being, a lot of being I think, a good manager I've seen from other people is mostly just making sure you don't get in the way and that you, you follow up with people and you help them to build the thing you want to build. So I think between those three things, uh, working with people before, building a product before, hustle and tenacity, I think those are the four traits I would look for initially.